you might be wondering <clears throat> you might be wondering why I was making this sound and for those of you who are not familiar to the Persian culture you might be wondering what the heck he was doing or how the hell he was making that sound. I am doing this in order to sync the audio I'm recording on this mic and the video I'm recording on that camera about, about two and a half meters from me uh, in, in the post. Why I do that uh, to make the best quality audio for you and best quality video as well. All of that I do that for you and sometimes it's difficult to come up with a new content for my YouTube channel because so uh, lately I've been very busy creating uh, regular uh, creating um, content for my SolidWorks Course Pro and most of my time and focus shifted on that direction. So for that, I decided to come up in front of the camera for you in this time and ask you what would you like me to cover? And I don't mean one specific topic. I would, I'm looking for a category. Uh, maybe I could make some sort of a small course, not a full course on SolidWorks because I have done that. It's a lot of work. It took uh, more than a year of my time and that's the SolidWorks course where I was talking about. I'm talking about any small mini course that could make sense to put on YouTube. Um, if you have any suggestions, please uh, go on my community, go on my channel in the community section and post it there. I would read all the comments. You could also put it as a comment under this video. I will answer and read all the comments, all the posts on my channels. I decided to search on YouTube and see what kind of topics are more uh, on demand. And I realized a lot of people are searching for uh, how to make gears in SOLIDWORKS. Although making gears is a very simple action, basically there is, if you go to mechanical mates in the assembly section, uh, there is a gear, there is a mate type called gear, which allows you to mate two gears very easily. Uh, the, the tricky part is what entities to choose in order for your gears to engage with each other perfectly and stay in that engagement perfectly throughout the whole uh, function in f the whole mechanism. And for that, you need a little bit of uh, mechanical knowledge of gears. I studied all these stuff. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I designed a gearbox back in university, but I cannot remember all the formulas uh, we use. I know we have to calculate the pitch diameter and pitch diameter is the entity actually you have to select in SOLIDWORKS. We will get to that in a minute, don't go anywhere. But how to calculate the pitch diameter is something I forgot. So I went on YouTube and start searching uh, on the internet how to calculate this, which made me even more confused than before, because apparently you need to have some diameteral pitch, which requires to know the pitch diameter and vice versa. So in, in order to calculate one, you need to have the other one. And in order to have the other one, you need this one. It's like a chicken and egg problem. So if you know how to do this, please, somebody put it as a comment, enlighten me. I would appreciate it a lot. I, I at this point, I still don't have time. At this point, I haven't figured out how to calculate that perfectly, but I'm gonna show you how to make it in SOLIDWORKS because that was the root question and I leave the calculation to you. Maybe after somebody puts it as a comment for me uh, in the next video, next week, I will try to elaborate on that in a minute. But in this video, I'm just gonna show you uh, how to make the gears and what entities to use and how it works. So let's go and see. Right, so this is um, a gearbox that I have made in previous videos on my channel. If you want to see how I made it, you could go to my channel and find the thumbnail, which is exactly this one. But in this video, I'm just going to go ahead and engage these two non-engaging gears together and show you how to make them uh, in a working way. So first of all, you want to place them close to each other and approximately place them not interfering into one another, but like adjacent to each other. Now I'm gonna go and delete the mate gear I have made before. And also I'm gonna delete this line and this line, which are supposed to be my pitch diameters. You don't necessarily need a sketch to use as your mate entities. You could just go to mechanical mates, go to gear, uh, select uh, two almost circular edges as your entities like this one and this one, and then the whole thing would work. However, depending on your selection, 
SOLIDWORKS would adjust the ratio of your selection. So if the radius of this one is 36 and this one is 1, the ratio of your gears is uh, 36 to 1. In this case, I know the right ratio between these two is 5 to 1, as a matter of fact. Uh, its pitch diameter is 5 times bigger than the pinion's pitch diameter. So obviously it's going to be wrong, but if you select OK, you have successfully assigned a gear mate. And if you rotate this one, you will see the other one moves, although it moves in a very funny way because it's not centered anywhere. doesn't matter. I'm just going to ignore it and delete the gear mate I just made. The right way would be to uh, assign or draw a uh, pitch diameter in the form of a sketch on your uh, gears, both of them. So I'm going to leave this one here. I know its pitch diameter should be 250, but since this is scaled, I'm going to leave this at 10 and leave the other one at 2, so it's five times as big. I'm in the assembly mode. That's why I'm going to have to edit my component first then click on it, draw on its surface, and draw a circle with the diameter of 2. Nice. And click OK. Now, if these two are interfering, it's because this gear is not placed in the right location. You could make these two, first of all, tangential. Done. If you don't know how I did it, I just held control key on my keyboard, selected two entities. Whenever you hold control key on your keyboard and select two entities, uh, a shortcut menu to your mate pops up here. So basically these four are the four possible mate types that you could assign to the two selected entities, right? And I picked the tangential. Now, if I go to mate and go to mechanical mates, activate gear, uh, pick this uh, diameter pitch and this pitch diameter, you could see it's 254 to 50.8, which I think is 5 to 1 uh, in an accurate way. But just to make sure, I'm going to reduce this 250 and 50 and click OK. Now, if I rotate my first component, the other one rotates, but in the wrong direction. So it's weird. It's not going to be like this. Uh, that's why the easy fix is to go back edit your feature, which is the gear mate we were talking about, uncheck reverse, I don't know why it was checked, uh, and click OK again. Now this time if you rotate it, the other one rotates with it, and as you can see, they do not interfere. As many times as I rotate it, still they're not interfering. But if you select it um, at the wrong ratio, let's just make this one 251 and 50, even with a one millimeter of uh, difference, let's just suppress this mate for a second so I can easily move this without moving the other and unsuppress it once more and this time they're gonna be there's gonna be some interference look at it if I rotate it you can see this tooth is now interfering with the other one why because instead of 250 over 50 or 5 over 1 I'm doing 251 over 50 which is slightly more than 5 over 1 and that causes some interference after many revolutions. So you know how to mate gears now again. It was in mate. It's under mechanical mates. You need two circular edges or cir circular sketches or circular surfaces as entities on two different components. And when you select them in the right ratio, your gears will engage and your mechanical gearbox would run perfectly. So I have done uh, one project for my SOLIDWORKS Course Pro, which I'm not going to teach here because it's not, it's only for the course, but I can only show you the mechanism I made. If I find it here, that'd be perfect. Uh, it seems like it's fine. Uh, just give me a second. It should be on the professionals. Right. Right. All right, this is uh, my gearbox set. This is a small gear the bigger gear, and we have another uh, thicker gear in the back connected to a rack. And we have a camshaft, which are pulling and pushing these, basically pushing only these pistons, these four. We have a pulley here connected to a universal joint, connected to this wheel, connected to a mechanical screw through a belt. So when I rotate this wheel, everything moves, the cams go up and down, the screw rotates inward, outward, moves the rack, rack moves the pinion, pinion moves the shaft, shaft the bigger gear, small gear, camshaft, pistons. So 
All of that is possible by applying some mate gears. Without it, you could not. So in this case, I have, uh, let's see how many mate, uh, gear mates we have used. One and we have one rack and pinion. So the only gear mate I have used here is between the green gear and the black gear. All right, guys. I don't know if I'm still in the focus because I was rotating. I usually stop the video and then uh, shoot again. But in this case, I wanted to do some dramatic effect. If you're watching this video and if you're interested in learning SOLIDWORKS as beginners, I highly recommend you to go in the link in the description below. Uh, check it out. Uh, this is my full course called SOLIDWORKS Course Pro, which is an amazing course that covers every topic you need from the moment you step to the realm of SOLIDWORKS without knowing anything, with no background in CAD. And it would take your hand, we move step by step. I'm always living there, I'm hanging out with the members. We have a special private forum where they can ask their questions and get answered immediately from me with videos, screenshots, even calls sometimes. And it's a perfect way of learning SOLIDWORKS because you're not alone, you belong to a group that is being mentored by me and that is basically everything you need. On top of that, we cover you with over 100 uh, different SOLIDWORKS tutorials that we have made over the past three years. Uh, all of them are designed by me. And uh, so far, many people have been purchasing them on a subscription basis, but now we are giving them away for free to the members of SOLIDWORKS Course Pro. On top of that, there are bonuses such as two PDF tutorials, one of them 2,100 pages, the other one 500 pages, uh, you get that for free. These are also step-by-step -step tutorials how to create a Tiger Tank from scratch to end to assemble in SOLIDWORKS. The other one, how to design and assemble a LSA switch box in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, you will learn some extra stuff like uh, electrical wiring in SOLIDWORKS and so on. There are many other bonuses that I don't want to list here. You can just check the homepage we have and see all the bonuses that come with the membership of SOLIDWORKS Course Pro. So I highly recommend you, if you're watching this and you're at the edge of doing or not doing it, definitely go do it. We have a 30-day money-back guarantee that I personally here guarantee you. If you don't like the course, I will return your money because we don't want to keep any unhappy, unsatisfied customers in our group. And also on top of that, there is a, um, a review link on the course that I will include in the description. You can see what other people are saying about SOLIDWORKS Course Pro and make your decision. I'm Ryan. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to check that bell button. That's the more important part. And I will see you next week.